Welcome to another Pedalar video. Today we're going to show you how to replace an oxygen sensor, there's one there as well, on a 2011 Lotus Evora S. Right, we are not on a um, ramp in a garage. Well, we kind of are. We're, we're actually in a pit in a garage, in a home garage. And um, the first thing you need to do to replace the oxygen sensor in your Lotus of OS. First of all, diagnose the problem. We'll show you that in a second using the, the uh, onboard diagnostics uh, connector and you're going to need either a reader or um, some software and a USB ODB connector. Um, we've already done that and I'll show you that in a sec, but you've got to get access to the oxygen sensors. They're here on the exhaust. These are two of them. Um, there are four in total on the Lotus of ORS, I believe. Uh, there are two pre-cat ones and two post-cat ones um, for either side of the exhausts coming out of the V6 engine. Uh, what that means is when you get an error code, as we have on this car, it will either tell you bank one or bank two, sensor one or sensor two. So bank one and bank two are left and right, I believe and sensor one and sensor two will tell you whether it's pre-cat or post-cat. Uh, we've got an error on bank two, post-cat, which is the left-hand side, I believe, um, and that's the one we're gonna replace. I believe, I'm hoping, it's this one, because um, it looks older than this one. So this one looks like it's already been done at some point. They do tend to go around the 40,000 mile mark, apparently. First thing you're gonna need to do uh, let's get under your car, uh, rightly or wrongly, we've already done that and we are crouching in a pit um, and you're going to have to remove the engine tray um, which I've already done in this car, you'll be pleased to know and you can watch that in my other video. So, as we suspect, this is our faulty oxygen sensor, okay? What we're going to do, so we're getting an error code, I can't remember, I think it's P161 on the car. Uh, we're going to unplug it first and it leads right up into there, I don't know if you can see that that plug there we're going to pop that plug there we're going to go back into the car reread the error code and make sure it's still throwing that error code if it throws a different error code then it's not this sensor it's another one and that's kind of bad news if it is throwing the error code um that's good we can hopefully with a bit of leverage unscrew this one pop the new one in and hopefully we'll be good to go uh just here there is actually a, a cable tie so holding this x this, uh, where this oxygen sensor plugs into the electrics here, it's actually wrapped around a uh, rubber pipe, and which is kind of annoying because we're going to have to cut that cable tie. I've got plenty left to put the new one in. But before we can unplug that to test this, this is the one at fault, we're going to have to uh, take that cable tie off. Okay, we snip that cable tie. There we go. Let's give it to that. That allows the cable to drop down. We should just be able to pull that apart. And then... and I've also noticed another little cable tie here, but we'll go back into the car. So we've unplugged that from there. There's a little push thing. Oops. Little push thing, where is it? On there. You see there? Just need to push that. And the clip does. Okay, we're gonna check. It. Okay, we're back in the business end of the car. Um, we're gonna check, because we've unplugged that uh, oxygen sensor, we're gonna check that the error code that we're reading is still the same, and that will prove that if that's the only one uh, that's throwing a code, that because we've unplugged it should definitely throw a code so the, how we do that let's have a look down here we've got some we have some um, software on a computer in this case a MacBook computer uh, this software is onboard diagnostics auto doctor standard and it's a registered copy we have a <laughs> we have a uh, onboard diagnostics cable this is an ELM 327 interface supports all Onboard Diagnostic 2 protocols, that says. Get one of those from um, 
Amazon, eBay, wherever. Your ODB port, most cars are all kind of the same really these days. It's a bit dark under there. Um, is under here. Okay. So you can see that. And that's where it goes. In there. So there's your pedals. You don't even need to remove any flaps. Right, so we know we were getting an error code before. Software is plugged in. Let's turn it over and make sure your car is in neutral. Definitely we've done that, and that's fine. Oop, turn your mobilizer off. So now we need to connect. So we've initialized the connection. It's telling us it's connected by the USB serial. It's detected all the interfaces. Um, I've set this up as a profile for my car. Hit OK. And sure enough, it's showing us engine code uh, 2. So we need to uh, check those. And they are indeed the same engine codes that we had before. P161, uh, O2 sensor, heater circuit, bank 2, sensor 2. Okay, That's the rusty one. That's the one that we're therefore going to try and remove. Right, we're going to... Uh we're probably going to have to battle with this bugger, I imagine. Look how busted on that is, so I'm going to give it a bit of fluid to try and loosen it off. And I'm also going to cut that other uh, cable tie and my trusty little pair of scissors got to. Oh yes, so there you go, there you go, you can see perhaps why that oxygen sensor is sending, throwing a reading, it's because it's shocked a bit. Okay, we've managed to totally destroy this oxygen sensor over a period of time. In an effort to remove this, we cut the wire first off. We then purchased a... 22 mil spanner like this and we also purchased a oxygen sensor removal tool neither of these worked oh actually that's not true the second one worked but only with a bit of leverage this one went on but kind of bent the oxygen sensor here it didn't kind of work properly this one couldn't get any purchase this end was okay what we did was we put that on there and we needed more torque this is often what happens when working on cars. You need more torque. So we actually use this. This is a worktop leg. It's a big bit of metal hollow. Popped it in there. That gave us a humongous amount of leverage on that oxygen sensor. Now, everything I've read says there's various ways of doing this. You can heat stuff up. You can um, do things like that. But essentially, you need a decent 22 mil socket that can get on there so you get rid of that if you want to put that on there try and get one of these or one of these but essentially key thing here for unscrewing this leverage you need torque you need to get a big long lever to get some leverage on this to get it off we finally managed to do it you can't tell you how happy i am because it cost me 15 pounds uk for that and like 8.99 for that at least i've got them now i suppose but there you go anyway, it's off, we're going to continue to unscrew it. And finally, the oxygen sensor is out. Okay, before we fit the new oxygen sensor here, let's have a look at the old one. So, um, this was the problem with the oxygen sensor, I don't, I'm guessing this part of it was kind of okay. It certainly looks okay, but a bit, bit, bit burnt. But this, so 2011 Lotus Bora S, this was catching on the exhaust and had gone through, which is actually, arguably, I mean, this is just fiery tarred material, but pretty dangerous, um, really, and slightly annoying. So that was an absolute pain in the, well, you know what, to get off. Um, hopefully this one's gonna go in a bit better. It's kind of been greased um, to make sure that, uh, hopefully it won't stick badly so yeah on to fixing this one 
Okay, obviously this time we don't you don't have the luxury of cutting off the wire, so you have to screw your oxygen sensor in. What we're gonna do before we clip it into place, or well, once we've plugged in the electrics, before we clip it into place, what we're gonna do is we're just going to hopefully reset the code. So I'm going to tighten this up, but I'm not going to over tighten it. You do not want that getting stuck in there. For a future owner. Right. We've got to clip it back in to the electrics which are under there right, if you can see so, try and get it away from the, the heat here of this exhaust so what was happening last time is the heat from this exhaust here was um, affecting the oxygen sensor so it's not the best design in the world I guess, so let's feed that back. I'm going to try next time. And need to clip that out of the way somehow. But for now, what we're going to do, I mean, that is not the best design, I suspect. Possibly here. a different way. I mean, what we could do is bring it around here. Why don't go above the exhaust? Mind you, that's still going to get quite hot. Is it? Leave it in the comments, anybody who knows. Because I could always revisit under here. That just seems ludicrous. Far too near the exhaust. It's going to get hot again and burn through. Anyway. Pull it tight up there. Put the cable tie around it. As it lasts, we are going to plug this in there. Oh, there's a clip there. So where does that clip to? Oh, and if that clips on there. Seems. Can you see how close that lead is to the auction sensor? Anyway, we're going to get out and see if we can clear the code. Okay, so we're back in the car area. We're going to turn off and see if we can reset the codes. Make sure we're connected. There we go, got the DCTs. Make sure the engine's off. Code's cleared. Let's try it again. And what you can see is no engine warning light at all. Hopefully, we fixed it. What we're doing now is positioning the wiring of the oxygen sensor. Positioning the wiring of the oxygen sensor here, away from the exhaust as much as possible so it's not touching using these little clips and we're gonna see that clips there but I'm just gonna loop that up with a, a cable tie to make sure it's out of the way and it's not kind of 
Dangling, we're gonna come loose. that okay. now we can put these bolts back in here hide this under trailer back in and then lower the car and we're done <laughs> 